Welcome back. This is part four in my series on building the Stuart 10V vertical steam engine. In this video, I'll be machining the standard. This is one of the most visually interesting and prominent parts of the engine as it connects the cylinder uh, at the top of the engine with the sole plate that contains the crankshaft and the flywheel and all that. So it constitutes most of the vertical height of the engine and it's going to be one of the more complex, most complex parts so far that I've machined. Uh, as you see from the drawing here, there's a number of operations we need to do to take, starting with the basic casting and turning that into the finished part. Uh, there's a number of surfaces we have to machine. The bottom surface of the standard needs to be machined flat to where it attaches to the sole plate. The upper surface needs to be machined flat to where it matches the cylinder. The outer edge of the top surface needs to be turned to a diameter that matches that of the cylinder. There's a bore that runs down the length of it where the crosshead fits. And finally, we've got some holes that we're going to need to drill. There are four in the bottom of the standard where it attaches to the sole plate. There are five more on the top where the cylinder attaches. I'm not going to be completing those in this video because I want to wait until I get the bottom cylinder cover done so we can get the holes aligned properly. First, as with uh, most castings, there's a lot of roughness that needs to be cleaned up uh, along the edges here. Uh, there's, these aren't machine surfaces. They just need to be cleaned up. I'm not going to worry about the top. That needs to be milled completely flat and the flash isn't bad. This outside edge is going to be turned on the lathe. The inside is going to be bored out on the lathe. And I have found a way to not have to file off the bottom. I can actually do this uh, better on the mill, as you'll see shortly. But the first step is to just do some generally clean, general cleanup with the file. So. Well, thinking about how to machine the top and bottom surfaces, and one of the key things that we need to make sure of here is that they're not only smooth, but they're parallel with each other so that the cylinder is going to sit properly. I was trying to figure out how to clamp this and deciding how much was I going to have to file off the bottom. And I discovered that the uh, extra material in there fits very nicely between the uh, in the slots on the milling table. And if I clamp it down, I did some measurements and playing around with it. These bottom surfaces of the casting are actually quite flat and even. I measured it. It's within a couple of thousand, thousandths of an inch all the way across the top. And I've got some machining allowance there. And so if I go through and just clamp this down, I'm made some custom clamps. It's a little block of aluminum with a slot to clear the web there. I think that if I can put that and clamp this way, and clamp this one over here, if I clamp down, that's going to hold this quite nicely. And I will be able to machine the top surface. Try this again with a 5 8 end mill. Okay, that's got it down within uh, about five thousandths of where I want it, which 
the rest I'll take off uh, while sanding it down to get a smooth finish. Okay, we're ready to mill the bottom sides of the standard. Uh, first bit, we'll take off the uh, extra bits of sprue, and I've done a measurement. We've got about 25 thousandths to go after that. To machine the center bore of the standard, I decided to turn it on the lathe. I've mounted the standard onto a f the lathe faceplate using the same clamping fixtures that I had built to put it on the mill table. And then, with everything loose, I used the center on the tailstock to make sure that it was aligned uh, with the axis of the lathe. Uh, matches up quite nicely there. Then I was able to go through, once I knew that it was pressed flat up against the uh, faceplate and it was centered because of the center on the tailstock, I was able to tighten the clamps up and so I've now got it solidly clamped to this faceplate and I'll be able to go in with a boring bar and bring it out to the 5 8 inch diameter that's required for the part. To drill the holes in the standard that mount to the sole plate, we use the same technique uh, of using the wiggler to align the uh, part to the axis of the mill that we did in when milling the sole plate. And now that we see that that's aligned, we can also find the corners and make all of our measurement reference from there. With the holes drilled in the standard, the next step is to align it to the sole plate and put the holes for the mounting studs into the sole plate. Unlike mounting the sole plate to the box bed, this isn't just a cosmetic alignment. It's very important that for the operation of the engine that this be aligned longitudinally with the axis of the engine and that it be actually centered over the crankshaft. If it's off to one side or the other, then the eccentric and the uh, crankshaft aren't going to work properly in the piston rod. To Instead of just trying to do this visually, I built a small alignment fixture out of some uh, steel rod. The bottom piece I turned to be an exact fit into the uh, mounting for the crankcase bearing. The upper portion I turned to be an exact uh, very close slit fit into the standard. And then, I don't know if you can see here, I actually put, put the uh, smaller piece on V-blocks and center drilled a hole, turned this to a quarter of an inch so that this two are now mounted together. And if I set this down into the uh, slots for the crankshaft bearing. This is aligned and I know that this shaft is going to line up with the center of the crankshaft. If I then put the standard on top of that, that's a tight fit, it can rotate this way and slide back and forth, but I, I can't move it longitudinally. I know that it's lined up over the uh, center of the crankshaft. Now I've done a lot of measurements previously and I found out that these are, I've been using these edges as center alignments. So if I center this this way, all that I have to do is use a transfer punch 
These are transfer punches are really useful. They come in either the letter or numbered drill size th sizes. These are a numbered set, and you simply take it with a hammer. It's the exact same size as the drilled hole, and if you tap that lightly with the hammer, it will go through and mark a spot on the lower casting uh, exactly where the hole is centered. I'm not sure how well this will show on the camera. I'm trying to hold it at a bit of an angle, but you can see that the marks have been transferred over to the lower casting. Now I can use a standard center punch to make those a little uh, deeper for... With center marked holes, I found that I can just uh, manually hold the part in place and use the uh, center drill, and it works quite well for drilling the holes. And with those holes drilled and tapped, we've now got the sole plate mounted to the box bed and the standard mounted to the sole plate. The next step, I'll start in the next video, is going to be starting to prepare the cylinder. Uh, and that will allow us to figure out where the holes go into the standard and complete the standard.